This is the uh, Leica um, fluorescence inverting microscope and so today I'm going to show you how to uh, use uh, the bright field mode on this microscope. Well, so that's the microscope. Uh, it's uh, in this box to avoid having dust inside so you should close it every time after use. So you just open by pulling it out and then there is a small thing here that will hold it. Uh, you turn on the microscope first by using the button here. And then you will see light coming through uh, if this uh, bit is in. If it's out, the uh, light will go to the camera. So you need to press that in first to have the light going through the objective. Uh, then you need to check a few things before you start observing your sample. The first thing is that this grey wheel here, you are on BF, which is bright field. That's the grey wheel that you should check to be in bright field mode BF. Uh, there are other modes in this wheel that turns like that. pH is phase contrast, for example. First thing you have to check is that it's in bright field mode. There are two sets of diaphragm that control how much light goes through the, to the sample. So again, uh, at the beginning, you may want to open them completely uh, if you don't know what your sample is. So there is one here that you can close or open. And there is one here, again, that you can close. It's written close or open. That are diaphragms, so they will control the amount of light going to the sample. And there is also here a shutter that will uh, close or uh, open the light. Um, there is only one of two that is working. Uh, the other one is just empty, but you can move both of them. So that's just a shutter. It's not turning off the lamp, it's just closing the bright field lamp going to the sample. So when you're doing fluorescence measurement, you can just uh, close the bright field with that and without turning off the lamp. So you've checked that you're in the bright field mode, you have both diaphragm open, you have the light going to the sample, and then you can load your sample, basically. So to load the sample, there are three different sample holders. The most conventional one is this one. So you can adjust the size of the sample. Mm -hmm. um, and there are two other. One is for the well plates. You can put well plates on that. And one is to put uh, four different uh, slides on the same, if you have multiple samples that you want to see. To put them, you can push the arm back, backwards. Uh, it will st stay in place, just don't push it too strongly so that you're not breaking it. And then you will see that there is a small red dot here. This red dot and there are two small springs. On this one, you also have a red dot here. On the other one, there are no red dots, so it doesn't really matter the order you're putting them. But basically, you have to make these two red dots pressed together. So then you can block the sample holder. Mm -hmm. If you're just putting it like this, it will move. So you need to block it, and then it's blocked, it's flat, it's not moving anymore. Then you have to choose which objective you want to use. So there are six objectives uh, on this objective wheel. Here is a 2.5x, this is a 10x, they are all in the order. This is a 20x, this is the 40x. And so from 2.5 to 40x is air objective, so you don't need to put anything on the objective. Then moving on, there is the 63x, and here, as you can see, the aperture is much, much smaller, and the 100x, which is also very small, and these two objectives, so 163, or oil immersion objective, so you will need to put an oil drop uh, to use the objective. They are also working with a very, very low uh, working distance, so it means that you cannot observe through glass slides, but you need to observe through cover slips that have a very small thickness. So I'll explain you now how you use the uh, immersion oil immersion lens, so the 63 and the 100. So, as I said, uh, you will need to uh, observe your sample through a cover slip and not a glass slide because the working distance of this objective is very small. And you first need to put oil uh, between your sample and the objective. So for that, I would suggest not putting oil directly on the objective, but rather uh, on the glass slide because uh, you will use less oil. So the oil is usually located here in this corner. It's in this box. So you just take it out. Uh, and you just take a, a small drop of oil and you put that on the cover slip. Then you put your sample in on the sample stage. Okay. 
and then you approach slowly the objective uh, to the sample and you will see when the objective has touched the oil okay. um, uh, that means that you've reached the right position and then you can adjust more finely the focus uh, when you're done uh, using uh, the immersion objective you uh, should again remove the sample and then you should clean um, the objective. We're using uh, lens cleaning tissues so you take one and then you just wipe like this the oil off like two or three times to make sure that all the oil has been removed. Again don't touch directly the objective with your finger but through the paper. So to avoid making any scratches on the objective you shouldn't use this type of paper or this type of paper to remove the oil but rather you should use these uh, lens cleaning tissues which are more gentle and will not leave any uh, scratch on the objective. So I said there are six objectives, 2.5, 10, 20, 40, 63 and 100 but you may want to use another objective here we have an additional one it's a 4x so if you want to use that one you will need to change one of the objectives that are already on for that one so you would first open this box the objective is screwed on in the box so you need to unscrew it so you need to unscrew one of the objectives let's say you want to remove the 2.5 so you unscrew it until it comes out then of course you shouldn't leave the uh, uh, hole here the objective empty because dust will go inside the objective wheel so you need to put the other one and screw it and then you place the one that you're not using in the box again to avoid having any dust on top of the objective as you screw it and then you just close the box so there will be no dust on the objective try, try to change uh, objectives change the objective back uh, after your session so that uh, future users are not confused about the objectives that are on. So you have chosen your objective, you can load your sample and then um, you can put that arm back in position and then there is a condenser lens here, an additional lens that uh, has to be on if you're using objective 10 or more. But if you're using the 2.5, so like this here, you should push it back because if not it will be not homogeneous irradiation but don't change the focus of the condenser lens here uh, because this will change how the image looks like it will be more blurry if it's not uh, properly aligned or properly uh, focused then you need to center where you want uh, where is your sample so for that you have to move x and y the sample stage so for that there are two here uh, wheels one uh, moves the uh, y direction or x direction doesn't matter the other move the other direction. So you center and you see the light going to your sample. There's nothing here. Okay. And then you have to adjust the focus in your sample by using either the coarse wheel here or the small wheel uh, and looking to the eyepiece to um, see when your sample is in focus. You can also use this uh, fine wheel here that will adjust the focus uh, finely. So the last thing you should check is that this wheel is called a filter wheel because there are filter cubes here to select the wavelength for fluorescence. It should be on five, uh, like here for bright fields, so there are no filters on. You can move that if you're moving it. You see here it's one, for example. Um, so let's leave in five for bright field. So when you're done with your sample, you can just discard if it's glass in the bin. Uh, if it's plastic like a well plate you just put it in the normal bin but don't put glass in the normal bin just put it here if that is full you can bring it upstairs and empty in the glass bin upstairs every time you use the microscope you should log into the logbook so the logbook there are different entries so you would have to put the date uh, you to put your name to put what time type of sample you've been observing is it cosmate protonosome gels etc uh, what time you used it and then there are five different things here that you should tick or not depending on uh, whether you've been using them so F is for fluorescence so whether you've used fluorescence P is for polarizer and analyzer do that if you've used them 
63 and 100 are the two oil immersion objectives, so it's to know whether you've used this immersion objective and H is for the heating stage, if you've been using the heating stage. So uh, do uh, log in uh, in the logbook every time you use the microscope so we know what people have been using. If there is a problem, for example, spillage on the objective, we know how to clean them. So uh, just a general message, uh, you're dealing with optics, so of course you shouldn't put your uh, fingers or anything else on the eyepiece or on the objective. And if some sample uh, accidentally spills onto the objective, you should tell uh, the person that is in charge of the microscope so that they can clean it properly. And don't just wipe it with normal paper because we need it to clean it properly. So when you're done using the microscope, you should remember to do a few things before you leave. First thing, remove your sample, throw it away. Uh, then you turn off the, uh, the bright field lamp and then you turn off or not the fluorescence lamp. You close the dust-free box so it stays uh, closed. You clean all the sample preparation area uh, and you log into the logbook, uh, don't forget that. And you clean also uh, uh, all the um, uh, computer area. You can close the software and log off. And uh, yeah, before you close the box, I didn't say, but you should of course make sure that uh, all this area is also clean, especially if you've used the immersion objective, wipe it off, put the oil on the side, and that's it. So this is how you use the uh, Leica Brightfield microscope. So now you know all about uh, loading the samples, changing objective, and using the uh, oil immersion uh, lenses. Uh, some general remarks to conclude. Um, don't forget when you're done uh, with the microscope, of course, to clean all the area uh, and to log in the logbook and to close the dust-free box. Uh, if there is any issue or any spillage uh, on the objective, you should let the person in charge know so they can clean properly the objective. Um, thanks for watching and work safely.